and it all began with a question of course uh, my uncle decided to play with me when i was a kid now he said he, he brought me up and very cheekily did something he said i'm going to tear this piece of paper okay and once i tear it i'm going to tear it into smaller piece and then in even smaller piece and he said what do you keep getting smaller and smaller pieces of paper do you think this will go on forever and it sent me off on a trail of thought i was like okay maybe i tried tearing it i could tear it to a very very small piece and then you have this little piece and you keep on you're looking at it and then you go like okay that's the best i could do and then the question strikes you which is what if there's a miniature me for whom this is a very big piece of paper now he begins he takes it away from me right i give him this piece of paper he takes it he starts tearing it down so he's little guy over here tearing it down and then he gives it passes it on somebody passes it on somebody who's even smaller what would it finally what would finally be the outcome of all this would the pieces of paper that you keep tearing still keep looking like pieces of paper or somewhere down the line will they start looking completely different in other words what makes up whatever we see around us could you break them break them break them break them and go somewhere deep inside where you start seeing something completely unexpected because when we notice things around us they seem pretty smooth you take a table it looks pretty smooth you take water it seems pretty smooth everything seems as if it's what in our minds we represent as solid right you go and knock it seems pretty solid doesn't seem like there's any any gaps or anything in there it looks pretty good now the question is what makes up these things and that is where our entire search is going to begin now we know that a long ago we've been told that there are five basic elements that make up this world right now the question is are there things that are even more basic that make up those basic five elements right and let's try to answer them and the question is if we keep doing that if we keep breaking it down would we reach a stage where i cannot divide any more no matter what in other words i've reached a part which is indivisible you know what at that time was called an atom yeah, long long ago people believed that there exists that indivisible unit if you keep breaking it down you'll finally get a little piece which is called which they call an atom now we're going to tell you we're going to define this atom in some time and i'm going to already warn you okay we're going to tell you that an atom is an indivisible unit and in some time we're going to tell you that atom is made up of so and so and so and if you don't go with that there's something wrong because typically we've just told you atom is indivisible and next sentence is atom is made up of these constituent particles these two cannot go well so what really happened was that atom was thought to be indivisible before we realized that even the atom actually is composed of smaller components which means in kind in one sense it is divisible yeah we figured this out a little uh, it was not too good that we figured this out because once we figured out that the atom could be split what really happened was two big uh, bombs were dropped in japan during the world war right that was kind of basically because we kind of figured out that atoms can be split so let's not go into that too deeply now but the idea is there is an indivisible unit what was thought to be an indivisible unit called the atom now the question being how do we know that it is indivisible one and how do these things come together to make up what we consider to be very very flat land in order to do all of this right the first thing we need to do is i don't know how many of you have heard of this movie it's a pretty old movie honey i shrunk my kids there was a sequel as well i guess you know honey i shrunk my kids again right so if you watch this what they do is they they end up becoming so small because our problem right now is that we are too big just too big to understand what happens if we go deeper and deeper and deeper inside till the point where we are comparable to these little pieces and in order to do that in fact in order to understand chemistry or what is called chemistry what we need to do is shrink ourselves down or in other words zoom in into the world to be able to see it in its true amount of detail because otherwise the eye is just going to smudge over and just show us flat surfaces flat flat glass planes you know flat walls everything looking pretty smooth but the more and more we zoom in like they did in the movie it starts to become incredible fun and let's do that so before we shrink ourselves a couple of things we seem to be sure of is that matter seems to be made up of particles it's not really as smooth as we see so one it's made up of particles and second they seem to be really really small particles because if they were large you would be able to see them right so how small are they really 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 small and that's a really vague way of putting it that's the best we can do so they are made up of particles and the particles that make them up are really really small